Happy Tuesday, Yao leaders. Uh, I'm uh, glad that we get to be back this way this week after taking a week off. Um, just as a way of reminder, so two weeks ago, uh, we saw Luther, who was so upset about these indulgences, post 95, sort of hammer 95 ideas up on the wall of his uh, university or his college's uh, church building so that for things for he and his faculty, the other faculty at the college to think about and to debate. And this week, we're going to see the fallout, the fallout of him doing that. In fact, we're going to see that him nailing those those 95 statements sort of starts a revolution. And we're going to we get to talk about talk to the kids this week about uh, about standing up for what's right or, or what your conscience says is right, and and look at all of that. Um, for uh, before we talk about what we're going to do uh, this week, um, I want to talk a little bit about what we about, about what we talked about or what we did two weeks ago. So um, we had a whole lot of content uh, two weeks, and I'll tell you, like, I was just really impressed with um, all of you as leaders and with the kids, how, like, well you worked, how well we worked through all those things, um, and in fact, the room was really quiet a bunch of times, um, and that's really exciting, and, I, and, I, and I'm reminded, and I want to go back, and I'm sort of reminded that um, our covenant, uh, the covenant the kids have with us and we have with the kids and, every, and we all have with each other, is that we're going to support each other and give guidance and be kind and uh, we're going to be present and we're going to stay positive and we're also going to have fun. And I feel like uh, two weeks ago we really did that support of give guidance and be kind. At least it seemed that way. It seemed like we were really present and we were positive and we really got through a lot of stuff. Probably, and this is on me, too much stuff that we put in that week. Um, but something I want to be careful about, and that is, I don't want to. I want to make sure that I do not squeeze, uh, squeeze our time together so much, and just sort of squeeze out the space that um, these young people have for discovery, discussion, and debate. Um, and really, from a, sort of a theological or sort of a cosmic standpoint, um, when we sort of squeeze things down and we don't give space, then we miss the Holy Spirit, and we miss how the Holy Spirit is working and helping to teach and guide and help us discover. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to hear. Um, and in a lot of ways, we're sort of disinviting uh, God and, 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 of course, the Holy Spirit in when we do that. And so, like, I want to make sure that we don't do that. Um, and I want to make sure that we don't miss out on the fun as well, which is part of our covenant, in sort of in the name of perfect order and perfect quiet. So this is a balance we're going to have to figure out. Um, um, but please, I hope you can join me in that, like, you know, um, uh, a little, a little, a little, you know, we didn't do anything wrong last week, but let's make sure that, that there's some energy and some life in the room. Um, so yeah, let's talk about, uh, some more about this week. So, um, we will be back in this book again here this week, and we'll also be digging into the, into the small catechism for, for one of our activities. Um, I want to say something about, um, I certainly this chapter and a little bit as we sort of go through Luther's life and, and this chapter, especially when we're in these parts where, where Luther is in, uh, let's say discussion, but really in protest and argument, um, uh, with the church at the time, um, and the church that, and this is sort of right before, you know, we get sort of really right as we get the Protestant Reformation and we are, you know, we as Protestants, those of us who are, uh, who are teaching here and our Lutherans become Protestants, like we, um, we're not a separate church yet, but these are the, the folks that Luther's arguing with are what, what will be in our future become our, 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 our Catholic, Christian Catholic siblings in Christ, right? So something about that book is that in hopes of making this story really clear, so it's really, so it's, and, and they make it really simple, right? So it's really simple to understand, right? Um, and as a little bit of a guy that's sort of sometimes a historian nerd and, and looked at some of these things historically, this stuff was not all that simple, right? These are human beings. So the, the, the thing about and part of that simplicity of making the story simple as for these books and for our young people to sort of learn about this is that it really framed Luther's opponents and allies as very sort of simple, either stock villains or stock allies. Um, and that may not be not be the greatest. So I want us to take care as uh, as we are leading discussion on Wednesday that we take care to be kind uh, to our Catholic Christian uh, siblings, uh, kind to, kind about, um, and even as we probably I would guess likely disagree with their behavior 
uh, with the behavior described in this book, which of course is 500 years ago now. We just sort of had our uh, 500 year anniversary of the Reformation. So this has been a long time ago, but let's also make sure we're still being kind. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, things we're going to do this week, we're going to keep doing the normal celebrations and rewards, uh, ups and downs, prayers, and housekeeping. Part of housekeeping this week is that we'll be sending assignments for the chili supper at the end of the month, um, and sort of what shift each of the kids are going to look uh, going to be taking. Um, two weeks ago, we had a lot of letters still left on the table, unfortunately. So let's please, as table leaders, I ask, can uh, we make sure that your kids take take their notes home? Um, and so that they know where they're supposed to be and their, and their parents know where they're supposed to be. Um, we'll also be sending out this email, but it seems like some folks are not on email and some are on email. So um, uh, we will then read in our book and we'll read how this sort of really a revolution gets started. Um, we'll dig into the small catechism. And part of that is we're going to ask you and the kids to look at how the first uh, uh, first commandment is explained in the small catechism, and then I want you to talk to each other about why refused why Luther refused to back down from his protest, and instead took such a really dangerous stand based on that explanation, right? Um, and this is the thing that you can really participate in as well. Uh, then I hope, uh, time permitting, um, we'll have you at your table sort of apply that thinking and to our daily lives. And we'll ask a question at your table, has anyone has ever uh, uh, taken a stand to defend someone who was in trouble? Um, and if we have time, um, we can uh, we can invite some of you, uh, some of the adults, some of the kids to stand up and share some stories where they stood up and defended somebody who needed defending or defended an idea that was right and just. Um, I think I have a story as well. Um, but uh, if we have time, we can we can certainly do that. And we can, again, apply this to our real lives. Um, finally, we will do an activity. And I think uh, Kim will probably facilitate that to help us continue to grow as part of a community. Finally, we will bless our kids. Um, maybe the I'm going to try something a little bit different again this week. Maybe if we get each table to line up uh, by the fountain. And so then each of you table leaders can go to the line that your table is at. And then you can bless each of your kids to make sure that um, each of them uh, receive a blessing. Again, this is like, I don't know, this our time at Yao is sometimes the only time that any of these kids has anyone to pray over them, and anyone to bless them, and anyone to tell them that they're cared for and loved by, 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 by the world, by people in this world, and uh, by God as well. Uh, last but not least, and then I'll wrap this up, something for us to think about. And, and uh, I want you to let, you, let me know what you think. Um, do we need to create a sixth table? Right now we have five tables and five groups. Do we need to create a sixth group? Um, I'm, you know, attendance has been great. These tables have been full. Um, and, you know, like these kids are really living up to this covenant that we had. Um, that's awesome. But also sometimes it feels like the room is a little full. Sometimes these tables are a little big. Sometimes it's a lot to manage. Um, and I also think it's sort of, um, uh, makes it challenging to have discussion um, and and really include everybody. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do we should we create a sixth group, a sixth table, um, and yeah, and let me know. Otherwise, thank you all for your service and helping these kids grow into adults, helping them to confirm their baptisms or decide if they're going to be baptized. In the case of a couple of folks that are in our group, and uh, and grow into 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 adulthood for the church. All right. God bless you.